Hello, my friends, and welcome to Fallout New Vegas. I'm very excited to be playing this for you on the channel. This is a game that I've wanted to get back into for a very long time. It's a game that I started playing, um, I think, right before I went into college. Uh, but for whatever reason, my, uh, my time was split elsewhere, and I never got a chance to finish it. And I'm very excited to do that because... As many of you know, I'm sure, as many of you have experienced firsthand, I'm also sure, um, Fallout New Vegas is one of the highest lauded RPGs in recent history. Um, it's by the Obsidian team, who has a lot of ties to the original Fallout games, which I've also played and also not uh, finished. The Fallout game that I spent the most time with was easily Fallout 3, which I played as a teenager. That was also my first Fallout game. And I had a really good time with that game when I first played it. And while my opinions about it have shifted over the years um i still regard that time very fondly um and i'm very excited to jump into this game with all of you so my plan here is basically to play the game um just straight up as the developers you know intended i don't have any mods running the closest thing to a mod that i have running for this playthrough is uh some slight any tweaks that should make for a smoother experience um just simple stuff like uh you know field of view changes um, and also something that will hopefully fix a strange audio bug that I was having during the uh, pre-recording testing. And um, we'll have to wait and see. So a lot of this uh, intro stuff is very fresh in my head. Um, and I do remember the game mostly. I remember the hard points of the game up until about the New Vegas Strip, which is where I stopped playing. Um, so I know the major factions. Um, like I said, I also saw this intro uh, before very recently. I think it's very cool. I think that uh, on the whole, the starting premise of Fallout New Vegas is much stronger than Fallout 3's and also Fallout 4, frankly. Oh, that's another point is that um, I dabbled with Fallout 4. I made it about to uh, the Kellogg quest. If any of you guys have played that game, um, then I kind of fell off. I got bored and uh, turned my attention elsewhere. Um, I'm very excited for New Vegas just because it's Obsidian and because um, many people whose opinions I respect and trust um, have War. shared their own personal experiences War with me never about this game. This is my boy Ron Perlman. When atomic fire consumed the earth, and I'll shut up so you guys survived, can listen. Did so in great underground vaults. When they opened, their inhabitants set out across the ruins of the old world to build new societies, establishing villages, forming tribes. As decades passed, what had been the American Southwest united beneath the flag of the new California Republic. That's fucking crazy, like in and of itself. Of democracy and the rule of law. As the Republic grew, so did its needs. Scouts spread east, seeking territory and wealth in the dry and merciless expanse of the Mojave Desert. Just the premise of Fallout is so cool. They returned with tales of a city untouched by the warheads that had scorched the rest of the world, and a great wall ah. spanning the Colorado River. The NCR mobilized its army and sent it east to occupy Hoover Dam and restore it to working condition. Hey. But across the Colorado, another society had arisen under a different flag. A vast army of slaves forged from the conquest of 86 tribes, Caesar's Legion. Jesus. Four years have passed since the Republic held the dam, just barely, against the Legion's onslaught. The Legion did not retreat. <laughs> across the river, it gathers strength. Campfires burn. Training drums beat. That's terrifying. Through it all, the New Vegas Strip has stayed open for business under the control of its mysterious overseer, Mr. House, and his army of rehabilitated tribals and police robots. Mm. Everyone's Ian got vices, Earth man. Maria, hired by the Mojave Express to deliver a package to the New Vegas Strip. What seemed like a simple delivery job has taken a turn for the worse. Yikes. You got what you were after, so pay up. You're crying in the rain, Pally. <laughs> Guess who's waking up over here? It's me. I'm who's waking up over here. Time to cash out. 
Will you get it over That's with? Matthew Perry, right? Maybe cons kill people without looking them in the face. But I ain't a fink. Dig? Mm. You've made your last delivery, kid. Sorry you got twisted. There's a Joshua tree scene. behind him. Ooh. Very scary. Where you're kneeling must seem like an 18 carat run of bad luck. It's a cool gun, too. Truth is, oh. the game was rigged from the start. Oh, man, it pumps me up. Great sound design, too. Oh, man, I got chills. Woo! I gotta say, I really, uh, I like that intro a whole lot. Um... My direct comparison is to the Fallout 3 intro, um, which has its merits, but I think that on the whole, the whole starting sequence of Fallout New Vegas is much more appropriate for uh, the role-playing experience that it's trying to provide. I guess the difference there is that um, Fallout 3 isn't really trying to provide a role-playing experience, in my opinion, of course. Please don't take that as objective fact. Um, also, these, uh, these little DLC... Um, message boxes. You'll hear me rant about that in a little bit once we're done with this little intro sequence. Um, spoiler, I'm not a huge fan. I don't like when uh, I purchase, because I purchased Fallout New Vegas in like, you know, some special edition bundle that came with all the DLCs. Um, this part is kind of fine. I don't mind it popping up right as I'm waking up with those dialogue boxes. But later, it'll throw them in your face in some very important, crucial first impressions moments. Why don't you just relax a second? Take yes, sir. Let's see what the damage is. How about your name? This is Doc Mitchell. Can you tell me your name? And I love him. I think he's an excellent first character. Character, excuse me, to meet. Uh, so my plan for this playthrough is to basically role play it as a self insert. That's something I've not done in a role playing game for quite a while. So I'm basically going to pretend as though that I am me in this uh, role playing wasteland. Um, that I'm just a, you know, a little courier who's uh, trying to make his way in the Mojave in the post-apocalyptic Fallout world. Can't say it's what I'd have picked for you, but if that's your name, that's your name. That is my name. I'm Doc Mitchell. Something about the way he delivers that line is so endearing to me. Now, I hope you don't mind, but I had to go rooting around there in your noggin to pull all the bits of lead out. I don't mind, I really. I my needlework, but you'd better tell me if I left anything out of place. we Will do. Also, we're playing in 4K, which is something a little bit special about this playthrough. Um, in my brief testing, I found that uh, the game looks... I mean, it's an older game at this point. I think it came out in 2011. Um, but it looks quite good, especially in 4K. Um, and with no mods or anything. So you know, I'm sure we could uh, really beautify it if we tried with all the different mods that are available by this point. Uh, maybe in the future, but for this playthrough, I'm definitely going to leave it vanilla so I can just experience it exactly as the developers presented it. Um, customize my guy a little bit. Uh, I've also noticed that in this character creator, um, so he's not looking super hot right now, not looking fantastic. Um, they look a little bit less weird once you're actually in game. Uh, but like I said, this leaves a little bit to be desired. Something about like the lighting or something. I remember seeing this and thinking it was such an improvement over Oblivion's character creator in the Fallout 3 version, of course. Um, which I guess is true. Anyway, um, what I'm gonna do here is go with a hold on a preset preset two i believe is fairly close to my appearance irl uh, maybe we'll give it a couple little uh adjustments i'd say my eyes are a little bit farther apart I'd say most people's eyes are a little bit farther apart than this default maybe a little smaller um down or up i'd say right about there maybe it's pretty close um, the brow, I'd say, is a little bit high. Oh, looks very surprised now. Um, up, down. That's pretty close, to be honest, to my face, my brow. I have thicker eyebrows, though, but I'm not going to get so in detail. That nose is fine. Don't want to spend a ton of time here. Um, don't have that much of an underbite. But then again, that doesn't... Ah, eh, that's about better. What about there, I'd say? Your mouth is kind of tiny, to be honest. Um, I remember when I was a kid, when I was in middle school, when everyone's at the height of their insecurity, of course, but I was so self-conscious about my small mouth. Let's see here. Cheeks. Um, shallow, pronounced. That's about right. Um, I don't honestly care that much. 
my jaw is about that. I'd say it's a little bit. Ah, uh, that's fine. And I say fuck it when it comes to the chin, right? Um, shallow, deep. I have like a, I have a pretty pronounced jaw, I'd say. Tall, short is maybe like right. I'm pretty much just gonna go with how it's set already. Um, I'm not a big fan of that pencil stash, but that's a different spot. Go to tone, tone of what my skin. Um, I'm pretty fucking white. TBH. I'd say that's about average. I'm just gonna leave it. Um, my eye color is dark brown. And I'll do for that. I'm probably a little bit older than the very bottom age option. I don't know if I'm about middle-aged. Um, but maybe. Maybe relative to the average Fallout citizen's lifespan. Um, that's fine. Hairstyle. This one's pretty close to my own. And I've already been through this character creation, so I know uh, what options are available. And this one's pretty close to my own. Go hair color, that's fine, don't mind. The facial hair, now right now I'm clean shaven. Um, I've had a beard for the past few years. Um, and it might be more realistic to throw the beard in there. But I definitely don't have this little uh, nicely shaved cutoff part. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it. Um, that looks pretty cool though. Maybe if I wish I had a beard like this, or I do wish I had a beard like that. I think I'm gonna leave it clean shaven though, just so it's a accurate representation of what I look like right now. How about that? Go back. Um, but I really do like that other beard. How about this? Let's see. Survivalist. I'm gonna get that, because I can probably grow a beard about that size. Ah, but I don't like that. That looks really weird. Um, it's like it's a 2D, it's like a PNG, like a transparency. Fuck it. I'm gonna leave it clean shaven. we call it done. That'll be my character. Well, I got most of it right anyway. Stuff that mattered. Yes, sir. Okay. No sense keeping you in bed anymore. Thanks, Doc. Let's see if we can get. Ooh, you baby! Gunshot to the head doesn't leave you in such great shape, Why does don't it? You walk down to the end of the room, over by that vigor tester machine there. That one right there. Take it slow now. It ain't a race. All right, he's so kind. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, he's so endearing. Um, how's the mouse movement? I feel like I could up that a little bit. Let's go to controls, mouse sensitivity. Let's give it three pips. Um, yeah, it's a little bit better. I had to change some mouse acceleration settings far. too because the menus were super weird in 4K. Go ahead and give the vigor tester a try. Oh. You'll learn right quick if you get back all your faculties. All right. Um, and what about the audio on the voice? Yeah, it's cranked all the way up. All right. Fuck it. All right, now this is where things get interesting. Um, if this is supposed to be a fair, uh, what's it called, uh, one-to-one -one analog of me in real life, um, at least we have a basis to go on, um, strength, I could leave at five, I'd say I'm about five strength, I think that's fair, I do go to the gym, if ten being, like, your straight-up bodybuilders and one being, like, the weakest motherfucker you ever met, I'm probably about a five, I'd say. Um, man, well, this is tough now because any points that I give myself, it's going to come across as bragging, but hopefully <laughs> it's not too, is, uh, what's the term? Self-aggrandizing. Um, my perception, I would say, is about a six, let's say. I'd say I'm pretty perceptive. I'm selectively perceptive. I've talked about this with my fiance. If something uh, captures my attention, um, I think I have the ability to... Uh, perceive quite a bit, but the stuff that captures my attention is very selective. My endurance is not so great, um, at least when it comes to stuff like cardio. Um, my sprints are okay, but, uh, you know, <laughs> endurance not so much. Now, charisma, I'm pretty comfortable giving myself a seven. Um, I'm blushing at the idea of describing myself that way already, uh, but also just because I like speech options and, you know, Fallout New Vegas is a very strong role-playing experience, so I expect there are many cool opportunities to use speech um, to unlock interesting paths through quests. So that's my other secret reason for doing charisma. Call myself a diplomat. And my intelligence, I would say, once again, if I'm self-describing, this will come across as very haughty, um, but I'd put myself up here. At about a seven, I think I'm smarter than your average bear. Definitely not like crazy smart. Um, I would call myself a know-it-all. It's a, a trait that I've worked to reduce throughout the years. 
Um, and agility, I'm uh, not particularly agile. What's the other one? Luck? Now see, luck I would say I have quite a bit of. I would consider myself a very lucky person, IRL. So why don't we actually do this? I'm going to go ahead and bop down my agility. And maybe even my strength. I feel like five is about right, though. I don't know. We'll call it a four. I haven't been lifting that much lately. So I have three points to go. I'm going to throw one in charisma. Okay. I'm going to throw another one in intelligence. I'm going to throw another one in luck. How does that sound? We're actually here. Maybe this. Intelligence, I don't know if I quite qualify as an eight. I'm going to put that other one in luck too, because I think luck is a fun stat. All right, here we go. Moving on. Four, six, four, eight, seven, four, and seven. I think that's an interesting spread for a character. What do you guys think? If this was a stream, you could tell me, but unfortunately it's not, so you can't. Good what you got for me, Doc? Good bullets didn't affect your charm none. <laughs> well, we know your vitals are good. But that don't mean them bullets didn't leave you nuttered in a bighorn and drop it. It's very true. What do you say you take a seat in my couch and we go through a couple of questions? Will do, Doc. See if your dogs are still barking. So that little section over there, the way that he commented on my charisma, um, I think that... Me so I know for a fact that in that little section, um, there's many different things that he can say based on the stats that All you right. choose. Um, and I'm I think that's awesome. Word. I think that's the I exact kind of role-playing touch that, to that Fallout 3 Dog. was severely lacking. Cat, of course. Uh, cat kick. Dinner, Jesus. House. House. Um, shelter, burglarize, renovate. Target, investment. I'd say investment. Ah, shelter, maybe. Night. Night. Um, let's see. Treasure, silence, or sleep. I'd say dream. Bandit. Bandit. Um, bribe, crush, stab, Swiss cheese, vaporize, reasonable. I'd like to try and reason with a bandit. I'd like to not really kill anyone outright. I don't light. like killing. I don't like conflict in general. Um, light and dark, of course. Light, heavy, beam, flash, inspiration, torch. Um, I don't know. Dark, I feel like, is the first thing Mother. that comes to mind. Mother, caretaker. Let's see. One of the other options, Tattle Regret, Human Shield, Jesus Christ, Caretaker. Okay, now I got a few statements. I want you to tell me how much they sound like something you'd say. Will do. First one, conflict just ain't in my nature. I'd say I pretty strongly agree with that. Um, I've always been averted to conflict ever since I was a child. Um, sort I of. I ain't given to rely on It's a complicated on question. Um, ah, maybe that's how I'd like to perceive myself, but I don't think it's the truth. I would say that I disagree with that. I'm always fixing to be the center of attention. Uh, I'd say that's pretty accurate, unfortunately. I'm slow to embrace new ideas. That I don't agree with. Well, it's tricky. Once again, these are, uh, simple questions with potentially complex answers. But if I had to say, I'd say I disagree. I charge in to deal with my problems head on. Mm. Once again, maybe the ideal version of myself does, but I'd say, especially in, in recent years, that's been more true than in the past, something I constantly work Almost on done here. still. What do you say you have a look at this? Okay. Tell me what you see. I see broken chain, a chemical reaction, a shadow in a door frame, an oozing wound, an angry two-headed ant. Hmm. Um, none of those things, really. It's an oozing wound if I had to pick. Okay. How about this one? Um, see, a priceless work of art. Some piece of space-age technology. Yeah, it kind of looks like that. These kind of look like little electricity marks up at the top. Um, a ship at sea. Oh, a ship at sea. I can see that. Kind of, these are like the sides, and you're looking at it from either the front or the back. The, what is it? The stern or the bow. I'm too embarrassed to say what it looks like. Oh, it does kind of look like a, uh, well, at least what I think it's referencing. Um, I'm going to go with ship at sea. Last one. That looks like two bears high-fiving. You guys see it? And like a, like a mother above it. A light in the darkness. A bearded man. 
Um, I don't really see that one. Oh, I kind of see it now. Uh, a bearded man, a mushroom cloud. Not really. A head on a pillow. Um, that one definitely not. I'd say, I guess, a bearded man because the other ones don't really fit at all. Well, that's all she wrote. Oh, yeah? I don't have nothing to compare it to, so maybe you'd better just have a look at the results. See if it all seems right to you. Yes, sir. Doc Mitchell. Um, what are you, the barter skill? Oh, okay, I'm selecting my major skills here. Um, definitely feeling an energy weapons build because I don't typically uh, play those, so that would be fun. Um, energy weapons, I got speech. Um, uh, sneaking would be fun. Um, but I know I don't have very high agility. Hmm. Oh, I could fuck on sneak. Um, but maybe it would be better to start with one of these other support skills. If I got speech, I got a, a weapon, and I got a dialogue skill, and maybe, like, a terminals or repairing would be useful. Um, create items and guns ammunition at reloading benches what would be the coolest to have medicine um, replenish using a stim pack it's a tricky choice I'm gonna go what does science afford me use recycle energy weapon ammunition at work benches I think I'm gonna go with science then I got the terminals and then I got the uh, energy weapon ammunition terminals are fun too because I like to read all the different things that they say Ooh. Before I turn you loose, I need one more thing from you. What's that, Doc? I got a form for you to fill out so I can get a sense of your medical history. Just a formality. Ain't like I expect to find you got a family history. I respect the, the Doc's uh, dedication to records and his craft. Um, okay. Now, traits are really fun. Traits are something I'm really glad uh, is back from the original Fallouts. You guys don't know. They are... Um, um, abilities you can select, usually passive abilities, I, if I remember correctly, that are both good and bad in a lot of cases, um, which is really fun. The Wild Wasteland unleashes the most bizarre and silly elements of post-apocalyptic America, not for the faint of heart, but the serious of temperament. Well, that could be fun. Um, hmm. Let's see here. Small size. I don't know. I'm not super tiny. Your skill, but not experience. Plus five points to every skill. Suffer from negative 10% from experience gain from now on. Hmm. It's interesting. Loose cannon. I know there's one up here, because like I said, I went through this before just to, uh, to test the recording. Um, I was going to say uh, built to destroy is one that I selected last time, um, which might interface well with... Oh, we didn't choose repair, did we? Hmm. Let's see. I wear glasses. I don't wear glasses in real life, though. I think my vision's pretty strong. TBH. Uh, good natured at heart, more prone to solving problems through mind and violence. Plus five to barter, medicine, repair, science, and speech. Minus five to energy weapons. I think that's worth it. I think that's a one, two, three, four, five skills, but minus five to energy weapons. And that's a, a skill that I already have kind of in a plumb, so to speak. Uh, does that work? In abundance. I'm trying to get overly smart here. Uh, when your health drops below 50, kamikaze. Negative 2 plus 10 action points. It's pretty cool. Um, Logan's loophole. No one's going to put you out to pasture because you're going to stay young and level 30 forever. After. What is. What is this talking about? Uh, the last. To after 30, you can kiss experience, perks, and skill points goodbye. Ooh, I don't like that. Loose cannon. Uh, nah. Skilled and experienced. I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with Wild Wasteland just so we can see some silly stuff. Um, well, I don't know. What do you guys think? Because I feel like this is a, a trait that you would want to take on like a subsequent playthrough. And since this is my first real playthrough, maybe I want things to be a little more serious. Um, using guns and energy weapons, you fire 20% more slowly, 20% more accurate. Not a huge fan of that one. I go with skilled. Um... So I feel like the experience rate, like you're going to end up hitting the level cap no matter what, right? And this game has so much content in it. I'll take that one. All right, I guess that about does it. Come with me, I'll see you out. All right. Oop. I'm naked. So you can see, I feel like my guy looks, I'm going to zoom in here, not quite as doofy as he looked in the, uh, the character creator, right? 
That's a pretty close approximation to my own face, I'd say. Oh, and of course, this is a pre-Skyrim game, so we don't have that diagonal walking animation yet. Wonderful. I bet you a mod fixes that. But we're not about mods, not this time. Not today. Not no sir. Here, these are yours. It was all you had on you when you was brought in. Oh. I hope you don't mind, but I gave the note a look. I thought it might help me find a next of kin. Laser pistol, huh? But it was just something about a platinum chip. Thanks, well, Doc. If you're heading back oh, and a pit boy there, too. You ought to have this. Pit boy they glove. call it a pit boy. I grew up in one of them vaults it made before the war. We all got one. Man, this man just Ain't giving me a pit boy. Now, but you might want such a thing after what you've been through. I know what it's like having something taken from you. Dude, Doc is the best. And put this on too, so the locals don't pick on you for lacking modesty. <laughs> Never was much my style anyway. Vault Twenty One jumpsuit. Thanks for patching me up, Doc. I don't mention it. It's what I'm here for. You should talk to Sunny Smiles before you leave town. She can help you learn to fend for yourself in the desert. She'll likely be at the saloon. Sunny Smiles at the I saloon. I reckon some of Got the it. other folks at the saloon might be able to help you out too. And the metal fella, Victor, who pulled you out of your grave. Anyway, you ever get hurt out there, you come right back. I'll fix you up. Thank you, Doc. But try not to get killed anymore. Will do. Fallout New Vegas allows you to play in a new hardcore mode that greatly increases the challenge of the game. Stimpaks heal over time, cannot mend broken limbs, rat away removes radiation over time, ammunition has weight, and dehydration is a constant concern. Uh, yeah, I'll be playing with that. Thank you very much. Um, ooh, you may turn hardcore mode on or off at any time in the gameplay menu, but if you activate hardcore mode, mode now and maintain it through the story, you receive a special reward. That's pretty cool. I mean, I would have turned it on anyway. Question mark. Ain't that a kick in the head? That's what I'm talking about, baby. All right, outside. And this is where uh, some of my ornery complaints are going to pop up. Now, look how beautiful that is, right? What a wonderful first. Oh, but then old world blues. Fragmented signal on your pit boy. Yep. So it's going to pop through all of these wonderful DLCs. Signal coordinates, canyon wreckage west of Prim. Ulysses. Lonesome Road, Level Cap, Happy Trails Expedition, Your Pit-Boy picked up radio broadcasts. Oh, his heart's been loaded, Level Cap been raised by five. Oh, is that it? Oh man, now look at that vista. Absolutely gorgeous, right? Oh, and this guy, moving about. Now my, uh, my complaint there is that this moment, oh, we're not done yet, Gunrunner's Arsenal. <laughs> the ongoing conflict in the Mojave Wasteland has kicked weapon manufacturers into high gear. Major, minor weapon, blah, 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 blah. Oh, cool. Um, this is a very important moment. This is the first time that you emerge from the, you know, an indoor location, the first time you have control in what is effectively the wasteland. It's a beautiful vista that you're obviously supposed to take. Oh, and Sierra Madre grand opening, of course. You're obviously supposed to take it in um, and, and it's supposed to affect you, right? And yet it's interrupted by all of these nasty ass DLC messages. Um, now, I understand that a lot of people who were using the DLCs would have loaded them uh, after playing the game or, you know, maybe after they've been in progress on their file for a while and that doesn't apply to us. But what if you're like me and you picked up all the DLCs before you ever played the game, um, then that's your experience, what just happened to us up there. It just, it seems like a waste to me. It seems like needless undermining of a moment that should be very special. Um, and there's such an easy solution. It's like just throw some sort of time conditional or some sort of condition that just makes you wait a little bit before those DLCs pop up. I understand that, like, the developers really want players to know that, you know, the thing that they spent money on is activated in the game. Like, I get that, but it still feels like there's got to be a better way than undermining, like, the first very important moments that you step outside. But anyway, that's my rant and complaint for the first episode. Or, oh, Weapons. All weapons fall under a weapon skill category. Yeah, I know what's going on. Thank you very much. Now, I noticed also uh, when I played through this little intro sequence um, that it gave me a bunch of shit from all those DLCs. Um, just some uh, some stuff that normally you wouldn't have if you didn't have the DLCs. And that's another thing I'm not a huge fan of is um, getting free, free stuff that actually impacts the game. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is um, take all the stuff that I would not have had otherwise and get rid of it. So that means, I believe uh, I had a laser pistol. Uh, binoculars I'm gonna keep, because those sound cool. Um, 
but the weather 10 10 millimeter pistol excuse me uh broad machete i'm dropping that apparel um oh my gosh i know what's going on all the rest of this stuff armored vault 13 jumpsuit leatherweight armor um let's see here value 180 no sorry value six that's what i'm looking at uh i'm dropping all the rest of this stuff this is not stuff that i would have otherwise i'm fine with that the other thing is that i had what four stim packs so let's make it four Oh shit, I just dropped them all. Well, that's not what I wanted to do. That's okay, though. I'm gonna drop all this stuff. I don't think I had weapon repair kits either. Um, miscellaneous bobby pin. I had some of those. I had a Vault 13 canteen. Maybe. Don't remember. TBH. Um, and these, I believe I didn't, didn't have any of these either. Um, so I'm gonna drop them. I'm gonna keep the energy cells, though. Right? Uh, let's go items. Go weapons. Give me that laser pistol. Um, and then let's pick up those stim packs. Where'd they go? There they are. Super stim pack. No, I want the regular stim pack. Where's the regular one? Right here. Stim pack nine. I'll just keep the nine. Whatever. Um, but that's all the rest of the stuff. I'm leaving it right there. Um, and that's about as far as I got with my testing. Oh, do I have a collision on those? Can't tell. Um, anyway, this is as far as I got with my testing. The rest of the game might as well be semi brand new to me there's a lot that i don't remember and i'm excited to continue on with all of you guys in our fallout new vegas adventure and thank you very much for watching this first episode with me i hope you'll stick around for the other ones and i'll see you in the next one